Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and I decided not to take a break from the airport and push on with part three. Whoop whoop! So as I say, I changed my mind in doing something different for a break in the airport, and that's just because I had such a lovely deluge of comments and uh, suggestions that I decided to action a lot of them straight away uh, rather than lose the sort of pace that I was uh, gaining. So um, I'm going to try and rattle through these a bit faster because we've got uh, amendments to both halves that we've already done and I still want to be able to join them together today as well. So let's get motoring. Uh, so some chocks here to hold the wheels. Thank you very much. Uh, another yellow T line because they would have one for each type of plane because they're all different lengths and so on and it would be sensible to have one yellow line lined up with our wheels. So thanks for that. Also, uh, although we didn't have a number on the uh, apron here because, well, it wouldn't be the end of a runway, a lot of people suggested I could have a number on the actual gate itself. Uh, so I've decided to add this one sticker that was part of the old um, city corner set, uh, just on a white panel piece that I can kind of add, hmm, probably to the end of the glass bit here. And you'll only be able to see it from one direction. This is where I destroy everything by pushing down. No, that's all right. Uh, so hopefully that looks good as well. It's quite subtle. Yeah, but I think it's an improvement. Excellent. On to the other half. Now the other half had even greater uh, number of suggestions for changes uh, and little fun scenes and all the rest of it. But I won't be doing all of those today just because all the scene setting I think I'll do when I've got the building finished because uh, otherwise it might get in the way of what I'm doing next. So um, the the main areas of comments around here were to get rid of slash move this ticket booth because the main angle with all these wonderful stickers on is completely invisible once this is the wall of the Lego room and we're looking in from that side. So I already thought that it was wasted uh, and a lot of you agreed with me. So I think I'm going to do something facing that way roughly. I'm not going to leave it there, but something like that uh, so everyone can see it. But before I get into the more sort of nuanced and small type amendments that I had about this whole area, I was challenged quite <laughs> quite thoroughly in a way um, by a couple of comments that suggested I'd do a complete overhaul of this area. Now, I don't usually do big overhauls because, you know, everyone will do it differently and that's fine. Uh, but once you've committed to one way, it's not usually a good idea to go backwards wholesale. Otherwise, we'd never get the Lego room filled. I uh, would never make much progress at all. But in this case, I think I agree with them. So the idea was to swap the carousel kind of in bag chute and the out bag chute of the check-in desk around. And therefore we could shorten this sort of first part of the conveyor, which isn't powered, uh, sort of pushing this guy back. So he'd be about here and then tie that in to a line here of um, other booths that would be in front of this sort of staff area. And that would sort of open up what is quite a narrow passage in between here and here, and also segregate the kind of areas that you use when you come into the airport from the one that you leave uh, via, you know, picking up your bags. So I thought about that and I thought, well, yeah, but it's just 50-50. It's one way or the other way. And besides, I've got this linking up to a turny thing in my roof. Uh, and basically that will only work on a flat portion of roof uh, and I've got sort of curves on the front sort of section and the back section so if I moved this all the way to the back uh, it wouldn't work through a hole in the roof at all so I, I almost gave up on it but then I thought well hold on now that is a good idea so I persevered and I actually stayed up till 2 a.m last night yep <laughs> a bit of a late burn that one um, in order to experiment doing a completely different roof structure now I'm hoping I've got all the bits for it because um, one thing about doing a complete overhaul when you've bought specific pieces for a specific project is that uh, changing it whole scale does sometimes mean that you just simply haven't got the parts and you couldn't do it for today's video. But I think I will, so I'm going to push on. Uh, and it means that this can be located right at the back and still have a turny play feature. So the first thing before I do any more sort of smaller amendments, which are more subtle, is do this massive overhaul that's going to mean I rip out, well, about half of what we did last time and put it in in a slightly different order. So uh, a big bedoying for that, 
while I get started, and I'm still uh, not cursing their name. Um, and while I'm here, actually, I will mention that a lot of people said I should motorize both of these two uh, conveyors and even tie it in with this. Well, your Technic uh, Lego ability must be miles better than mine because that sounds like an absolute nightmare. <laughs> I'm not going there. I'd have been up way later than two trying to work that one out. So uh, anyway, I'm going to get on with the reshuffle. Okay, so the carousel's back in and it's as far that way as we can go. Uh, and I've also managed to push all of this conveyor belt uh, one stud to our left. I don't know why I didn't do that before, because now the 2x6 brick is actually clamping these two base plates together, which is obviously uh, a helping hand. Uh, then I need the next ramp, and I've changed these cheese wedge pieces from yellow to dark grey, which was a suggestion. And that's uh, just going to tie in with the pieces that it's right next to a little bit better. We'll get that in there you go you see gray on gray so that makes more sense and then the next one has to slide in or oh, here uh, and all of this uh i've tied in with a couple more suggestions for example that um the the staff room area is a bit underutilized as it stands which is this sort of area with a coffee machine in here uh, and I thought what I could do is reflect another idea that I had to have an x-ray machine on the outgoing baggage because you would just checking for, um, you know, illicit materials and so on. So I thought in this area here could be an x-ray machine kind of way behind the check-in desk uh, where some security people are, well, x-raying all the bags effectively before they get loaded onto the uh, baggage car and onto the plane. Uh, and I think the best piece to do that is actually from a junior set, which is 60261 Central Airport. And that is this, a wonderful printed piece, which, well, let's face it, is an x-ray of a bag. And it's got a teddy bear in it, a toothbrush and some sunglasses, all essential for a holiday. Uh, and I thought I would just make it kind of a tube for everything to go through. So I've got a normal white panel on the other side, but I've put some of those sort of hazard stripes because obviously x-rays are not good for your health. So if I can put that sort of structure over uh, in place of two of these four long panel pieces and then make up the difference with some two long panel pieces, then I think that will be another fantastic suggestion incorporated. <laughs> right, so there's the x-ray scanner attached and the screen's facing that way so we'll actually be able to see it from the uh, standing hole in the Lego room and it's actually wedged in a bit better this conveyor now so I don't need the illegal building technique uh, to sort of hold it in position so that's good as well. Uh, this guy's computer screen I've decided to give him the uh, departures one with the time on and the seat numbers and so on because I think that'll be a bit more fitting than normal screen he had. And you'll see now that the first bit of conveyor is very short. It's only actually uh, two by two plus the curved slope, whereas before it was uh, six or seven long. So that's a lot better. And we've got the beginning of a dividing wall between this section and baggage reclaim. And that'll be kind of the exit to baggage reclaim. It's still a bit of a squeeze. You know, we can't get absolutely everything perfect. Now, the other thing I'm going to do, which is a fantastic suggestion, is to basically put another kind of wall, albeit a low one, at this level, which will mean that the bags sort of vanish into a different area, which is kind of the back room, which is all of this, and that's where security be will be. Uh, and there we're going to have one of our airport security people, this guy with nice shaggy hair and a good tash. So we'll put him in here. So he'll be examining the footage of the X-ray machine. So he needs to be looking at it, doesn't he? There we go. Uh, so that looks good. Uh, and I've decided to swap these doors around as well. So this one uh, was on the outside, but now I'm going to have it on the door in this space. So let's do that. Um, and then the other door, which was more sort of referring to where air traffic control was and had a keypad, would be on the outside. So that was another great suggestion. Thanks for that. Okay. So basically, I just need a couple more uh, of these lovely arch pieces, these low ones, in order to kind of work off this door and kind of create another 
low wall because all these buildings after all are just giant spaces that have been kind of carved up with fake walls so it's actually quite true to life uh, so I'll get on with that and there's the low wall that does look really good and deserves its own bedoying there we go so that's really good so now the baggage kind of appears through this arch and drops down and disappears after check-in through this arch straight into x-ray uh, and then this whole section here is kind of a very 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 condensed version of all that stuff that goes on in the background of an airport that we don't usually see so yeah i really like that it's a really good improvement uh, so now you can see it flows a lot better we've got a lot more space here uh, so I think the massive overhaul was a success. Cool. Right, so now on to improving things. Well, uh, now we've got everything orientated this way. We have got space for kind of a ticket office here, but it's only six wide. So instead, I thought I'd use those air cargo stickers that I had on the green bricks and make a little air cargo setup that was six wide. So I'm just going to put that there for now and put some boxes that are ready for collection behind there. So these are just from my massive stash of cargo uh, that's going to be ultimately in my cargo yard. Um, and I'll put what that one there was the one on an angle or maybe, oh golly it's very hard to reach now. There we go. And then put that one against the window. It's nice and bright red. Uh, and then we need an employee. So this is a cargo employee that I got in a recent haul. Very nice torso that one and very appropriate indeed for this setup. So we'll want that there. So should we have her right pushed up against it? Mm. See how that looks. Golly. Oh, what a squeeze. Oh yeah, no, that does work. Yeah, that looks quite good. What do you think of that? So now I think that we've got exactly the right orientation i mean it kind of looks like an airport i mean you'd have loads of these gates next to each other or rather these check-in desks you'd have a whole row of them wouldn't you we've only got one but so be it um and then you've got kind of an air cargo one right next to it but what i thought i could do therefore is kind of change this up a little bit and kind of continue the kind of hatch type look of this and actually reflect another comment which was to have kind of like the airline sign above the check-in desk. So if I just get rid of that one by one, then I can bring in this setup, which basically has a blue column that will fit in with this wall. We can start to see how I was up for <laughs> 2 a.m. at this point. Uh, and then we can put the air cargo one back. Uh, seamless. <laughs> Those of you playing the uh, game will have to finish your drink, because I said seamless. Uh, and you think, oh, well, hold on. Yeah, but you've got a great big white sign. Yes, I have at the moment, but he says, looking left and looking right. I've got another one of the sticker sheet from the uh, airport set, 60104. And along with all of these sort of no stickers and things, I've got this one that would go on the top half of the uh, actual uh, jet door, kind of like the one we've got on our jetway. Um, and this has got the wonderful sort of Lufthansa-esque logo on with this lovely orange stripe at the bottom. Uh, blue, white, orange stripe at bottom. So I'm going to put that on there and then hopefully this will look even better. Uh, and with this restricted door, which I forgot to turn around because I now need it to open into the back room because otherwise there won't be room for it. So I'm going to do that as well. Cool. Ho, ho, ho. Look at that. It looks fantastic, that sign there above him. It really completes the checkout desk look really like that you wouldn't know it's necessarily from the sort of plain door i really like it yeah really completes the look and kind of the complete uh run of desks along there so thanks very much for that suggestion and i really like it with the splash of orange it just adds a bit of brightness that's very very um beneficial to the scene uh, and i do think that it works a lot better with this sort of shorter conveyor before the actual powered one and uh, then we've got the, the nice wall, which we can see the X-ray machine through, but I don't think that's so bad, especially it's good to see for us to enjoy and know it's there. 
And it's quite fortunate that I actually had all these pieces because usually when I go off piste and I haven't bought the specific pieces for a specific build, uh, I don't have them. So I can't make major amendments. But in this case, it just so happened that I had two more of those arch pieces on the back of this control tower from 60022, which is the uh, cargo plane that we hung a few weeks back. Uh, and it just so happened that uh, I don't need those in my control tower build. So that is very good news. So I've got a clipboard piece just to give to the cargo lady at her desk. Push that in there. I'm probably going to put some seating in here, just facing those two, just because I can. Uh, I'll add back these turny handles to the outside of my conveyors. And rather than have all this gubbin showing, I don't know why I didn't do this before, but I can just add a too long Technic axle instead to each of these and make them a lot shorter uh, and just as easy to turn. So I'll do that as well. Uh, and then I think we can start to move on to Territory as New. And just a quick view from the front to show those uh, changed over things. Still easy to move that one and even easier to move this one. So we can have a nice pile of luggage sort of swamping a person in due course. Uh, and there's that door that's slightly more apt there, I think, with a key lock on. And there is our security operative and the screen that he's watching with the insides of the bags. So we can all see all of that and we can see the packages from the outside as well from the cargo thing see the check-in man. So I think the view, oh, and the air cargo sign. So I think the view and his monitor. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the view is definitely much improved from the outside perspective. So I think we've done a great change there. Uh, right, so on to the next bit here, which is the revolving door. Right, so the revolving door bit goes here in between these two columns. And before I put it in, I'll just put one of these tiles on each of them, which shows the uh, times for the departures and arrivals. And that was from the recent um, Juniors-esque 60261 Central Airport from this year. And I think I'll just put them like that. So if you're hanging around outside the front or you're a bit late, you can see whether your flight is on time. I think that adds a little bit more colour. Uh, and then for the revolving door itself, I've just lifted the one from 60104 completely unchanged. That's because, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that can go in that gap there and turn very freely as well. And I've just put some decorative tile as the start of the pattern I think I'm going to do on that quite deep pavement that's going to be in front of this building, um, in front of the driveway, which will have things like people dropping off and taxis and so on. So that looks good, I think. Uh, and on top of that, there'll be one of these turny knobs. So we've got another play feature. So there'll be one here and one here for the carousel and obviously the two on that side for the two different ramps. So that will turn that. And that just needs this monstrosity, which basically I made beforehand. So I could just slot it on there and hold all of that in place. So this white tile layer is going to be underneath the huge roof. Now that's going to need a lot of support, so I'm going to have to start putting in some sort of cross beams. Uh, and for those, I decided to use white Technic bricks because I thought they looked a bit more industrial, a bit more like the inside um, of one of these large sort of huge buildings. And that would look something like that. Very good. So you can see I've started to put columns along the back, which I am going to need because otherwise that roof is really going to sag and bow. I haven't forgotten this uh, brick here, which I think I'm just going to hang on the underside of the next sort of spanning piece. Uh, and I've even got these um, decorated panel pieces. I've got several of them, actually, because I've been uh, collecting those. Yeah, big surprise. They came in a few sets from the 90s, including 6597 Century Skyway, and are just the probably clearest looking um, arrivals and departure board. Uh, of all of them, probably cycles through them, doesn't it? And I've basically put a single clip on the back of that so I can kind of hang them from these columns. So you can see I've put a brick, a modified brick with bar on. And I think by doing that, you see they're sort of tilted down, aren't they? Down towards the viewer. So if I've got those all over the place, I think it will look even more like an airport. 
Now, for those of you who don't like stickers, we are filling this place up with stickers pretty quickly, aren't we? But um, nonetheless, I like stickers, so that's pretty good for me. <laughs> right, uh, good. So you can start to see that. So I think the next thing is just to finish off the top of this. So we've got a single sort of tile flat layer. Uh, and you can also start to see what I'm planning to do with this carousel. Because I want to be able to lift off the roof. It can't be too sort of wobbly. I mean, look how wobbly it is at the moment. So what I'm going to use is one of these axle holes to kind of hold the top of this and indeed its own turny brick uh, firmly in position. So when we uh, put the roof on, we just need to place it on top uh, and it all fits. Yep, seamlessly. Finish that drink. Right, so there's the Technic axle put through one of the holes and it's perfectly aligned with this vertical section here. So if I just add a bit more in the sense that I'm going to add another axle extension and an end piece there. Actually I'm going to need a spacer on here. So there's a too long spacer and then that goes on there. Then that holds the whole thing and spins very well. You can see now it's completely, well, rigid enough anyway. And that can have another one of these turny things on. I've used the second sticker from the second sheet that I had. And there we go. That's pretty sturdy now compared with how wobbly it was before. That's going to fit very well through a hole in the roof. So basically both of these two play features or play features number three and number four will fit through the roof on holes uh, and will kind of look a bit like, um, I don't know, air conditioning or some sort of roof feature uh, apart from the sticker. But I like visible play features. So I think that looked really good. And it will look kind of like a, a functional airport as opposed to just a sort of pretty one. So I like that a lot. Uh, then moving inside, you can see I've extended this right out over here. I've put that sign on the underside of that. What I now need to do is add all sorts of things. But the next section of wall can come in. And that has got another one of those leaning signs on with all the departures. And this is where I thought I would now put my ticket booth. Uh, so I've got the ticket booth as before. Some people thought there were too many stickers on there. No, no, there's one short, I think you'll find. So I'll push that down there. And now we can see it a lot more clearly from the front and possibly even through the door. A lot more than we could before anyway. And there's a nice smiley man in there. And I thought I'd give him an actual ticket to sell which has got Billund and CDG, so that's probably Charles de Gaulle in uh, Paris, one would imagine. Now that one is from the other Junior's um, airport set, City Central Airport 10764. I think there was a similar one that's a bit different that I've got coming in a, a Bricks and Pieces brick haul from the more recent one, but that one's from there. So I can just put that on his uh, little desk there to sell as well, so another little detail. Now... In order for this sign to make sense, I kind of need to separate departures and arrivals. So we've already had check-in desk down here, and this is going to be uh, security that you have to go through so you can get through to the waiting room for the gate. So that makes sense for it to be departures that way. So arrivals this way, and that's because the baggage uh, carousel is there. So I've got a little bit of wall here, just low wall, just to accentuate that. So people arriving would come from another part of the airport down here, pick up their bag on their way out and go past that grill, which is very subtle, but kind of represents the uh, don't go back from this point sort of section. Uh, and it makes it even more distinct. So I hope that sorts out a lot of the suggestions that um, maybe the airport didn't follow a strictly uh, true to life uh, format. Uh, I think this is as close as we're going to get anyway in Lego form in this very limited space. Right, so it's really coming together now. It's looking fantastic. Uh, I need to get another spacer on. I think actually we need to attach the base plates from uh, part one uh, and really get this going, which means this is going to be practically impossible to turn. So I think I'm going to turn it now while I still can. So we're looking in from the back. So I just thought I'd, uh, after joining these together, give you a vertical view of what we've got. So there's the uh, part one area with the facade plane and the outside and the skyway or jetway. The empty to-do bit. Then we've got the revolving door with play feature. And then we've got those lovely signs and the, above the ticket office. 
uh, and then here we've got the carousel which again we can turn uh, and the uh, what would that be in ramp and the out ramp and there's wonderful desks down there as well I've put a couple of seats down here just because uh, there's a little bit of space there and people might be waiting for their package or something like that to be processed and I've added a third one of these wonderful signs up here because I figure you can't have enough and I've got four one two three four so this one will probably go over here in what will be the waiting room right so now what I've got to do is have kind of security uh, a waiting room and probably a shop uh, all before the gate to get onto the jetway and onto the plane and away so yeah it's looking pretty good lots and lots of detail lots and lots of stickers and specialist pieces and all the rest of it so let's get going wow this is getting harder to reach in and harder to show you as well <laughs> uh, i've moved the uh one of the screens from over above the uh check-in desks over here just so we've got one facing kind of that way for people sat down and one here for people kind of sat down over there so i think that looks a bit better as well uh, and then to augment this area uh, I need to add loads more stuff uh, so first of all I thought I'd have security here so we need a barrier uh, which I'll just use this too high blue wall as per usual and when I was doing all my amendments it turned out that I didn't have anywhere near as much blue bricks as I needed so I've pretty much had to cannibalize those off all sorts of other things uh, and there is another uh, bit of too high wall and then for the gate itself, the security gate that you have to walk through, I thought I'd use this uh, door frame because it's got this lovely uh, hazard sticker on. And I've put some sort of red and green lights on the top to sort of buzz if you've got something metal on you. And I'm actually going to put that that way around so we can see it from the Lego room that's striping rather than from the wall's perspective. So that can go in there. Very hard to show you. Maybe I should take off this and it will help a little bit uh, with your view. There we go. Uh, and maybe this as well, briefly. Okay, so you can start to see it there. Uh, and then I thought this would be the actual x-ray thing for your hand baggage. So you put it on one side, slide it through there, and you see I've got two of that sticker, which is from one of the uh, earlier airport sets with a nice x-ray case on it. So I like that a lot as well. So I thought I'd put that in maybe about, I don't know, there. And makes the best use of space uh, and then we need another airport security person and they've got a little setup here so they can basically open somebody's bag on this little yellow area and this is from a friend's airport with a similar sort of uh, x-ray picture but this one's a live one of a bag she's searching and obviously it's got some um, uh, kind of a what would that be ipad or iPhone or something, some keys and so on. So I thought that could go around this corner and therefore this sort of little nook, as it were, could be used for security. So let's have her kind of looking super cool in her shades, looking suspiciously at people whilst also working on the computer like that. So you'd go through here at a beep, your bags would go through there and you'd pick them up again. And the last bit for this area, I just thought I'd put a recycling bin on the other side of the wall, just before that gate, so you can sort of drop your water bottles in and things like that, that uh, obviously you aren't allowed to take through. So there we go. Now this whole area I'm going to do with loads of seating, uh, but I also want to just do a bit of framing around this uh, set of steps here. I'll take one more of those off just so we can see it a bit better. Now, um, usually this whole area would be up at the same level as the jetway, but obviously that would be a bit of a pain to do here. So we have got some steps going up, but to make them a little less precarious, I've made this setup. Uh, and it's just uh, one of those one by four kind of wheel uh, axles that's often got trolley wheels on it with a robot hand on both sides uh, and basically one of those really long antennas. And that means that I can clip that onto there and use both of those as kind of handrails all the way up but they're quite sort of delicate handrails uh, it might look a bit funny from that perspective but it really does look quite good when everything else is in so i'm just going to add a little bit of one wide bit of wall 
in blue and eight long piece of wool in blue in fact that should probably go there then there we go and you can see that these bits are coming right down to there so that's good put that back uh, and then the gap in between them is just another gray door frame so it is literally a gate that you have to walk through to get up those stairs so that's looking good right so if i can get my big hands in here i'm going to be able to put some uh, more seating in which will be blue I do tend to put my seats directly onto the base plates. I know you should technically elevate them or something, but it just seems to be a waste of pieces to me. Uh, and then here, I thought I'd have another sort of back of store, much like we have here for the ticket office, uh, but for a newsstand, because we do need some sort of shop and refreshments for people waiting for their plane. So I thought I'd use this one, which is sort of missing the middle at the moment, which is from the um, bus station set, 60154. And it's kind of got a newspaper rack, a couple of drinks and so on in kind of a fridge door and stuff. So if I put all of that pretty much, uh, probably right up to there, probably there, then I think that'll look good as well from the perspective of the Lego room. Uh, right, I'll build this wall all back on, uh, put all that in place, put the seating in, uh, and then we'll take a look from the front, I think, this time or maybe from above. It's getting really hard to show you. Wow, what a session. I'm sorry I've motored through some parts of that, but really we had so much to do and I didn't want this to become an hour long video. <laughs> but if we try and recap what we've done today, we've done a few amendments over here with some chocks on the wheels and some different yellow lines and even a number for our gate. Uh, we've added all of the structure for the next section including this wonderful, I think, uh, little technique for adding a, kind of a handrail onto our stairway up into the gate. We've added loads of seating, which hopefully you can see through there. And this is the security post from the other side. Uh, we've added all of airport security in there, including the actual security gate itself. Very hard to show you. There's the newsstand from that bus station set. That's looking pretty good, I think. Uh, just the other side of the wall is our moved ticket office, which looks great there. There's one of our four screens, so one, two, three here and four here for our departures and so on. We've also got some live electronic screens on the outside uh, with our revolving door that we added this time as well. Our main central foyer is in here, a bit hard to see with that brick successfully used. Uh, and then we did a massive overhaul of this area. So we've kind of got our arrivals, people coming from another part of the airport through from this direction, through the wall, picking up their bag at the carousel, which also has its function firmly held in place so it can integrate with the roof. Uh, and then we swapped all of this around, including adding a lot more, well, layers to it really i suppose we've got the layer with the uh, air cargo desk and the check-in desk behind that some cargo behind there and this wonderful little sign that we've got there which is the door of the um uh plane sticker just put all that back together uh, and then we've got this extra line in here which is where the bags all disappear through which represents the uh all the stuff that you don't usually see behind the scenes, including an x-ray machine in there, that you can just see there, uh, and another security person. So I very much like this in that everything comes in through this door, then people pop over here and then go this way to wait for the jetway, uh, and then the bags get processed in this section, this last window section, before going out to all of the throwers who are uh, running all the baggage carts and so on. I will be adding a lot more detail outside. Uh, if you remember from part one, we talked about the big sort of roadway bit that's going in front of here. So we're going to have lots of pavement detail and patterned tiles and so on out here as well. Uh, we're going to have a fence around both of the outside bits, uh, that side and this side, which is why we can't move the plane forward anymore. We will be spreading out some of this, including putting this probably over here so it's just a bit more balanced. 
I do hope that we can link this up with the monorail system. It's going to be quite tricky because it's very unwieldy in the sense that it's got very large pieces. So if it doesn't work, it just won't work, essentially. <laughs> Uh, and one more thing I wanted to add to this outdoor area was another one of these buggies. So I've deliberately designed them so they're exactly the same. Though on this one, I've added the plate 60103, which comes from the airport VIP sticker sheet. Uh, no, it doesn't. It comes from the air show sticker sheet 60103, uh, as opposed to the uh, airport one. So they're just one number off each other, which makes sense, but they've still got the same sticker on there and I've used the follow me from that extra sticker sheet that I had which has turned out to be incredibly useful today uh, to duplicate that element as well. Now the only thing that remains is to give this a function because I'm not going to do two more baggage carts uh, so I thought I'd make this into a bit of a plane tug and although they might be a bit more robust vehicles because this doesn't look particularly powerful uh, I thought I would still do it. So it's just got this sort of big stripy long tow bar. Uh, so it can kind of be curled up here having just brought in this plane. Now pedants will point out that there's probably not enough room for this thing to have pulled it in and done this corner and all the rest of it. But so be it. <laughs> we just don't have the room to do it properly. So uh, I thought I'd incorporate one of those just like they did in the 3181 passenger plane. So there we have it, a pretty huge uh, set of progress today, I think. All the structures there to take a huge roof, which has been redesigned right up into the early hours of yesterday evening. Uh, and I'm really happy with how it looks. The only problem is it's quite hard to show you. I think before we do any more development on this, which will probably be on Friday, I think I need to take all of this very, very carefully up to the Lego room. Uh, and I think in that setting, we'll be able to see it a bit better, uh, especially when we're doing what's going to be even larger developments uh, in the near uh, environs. So let me know what you think, as usual. I do hope you like the improvements. I think the uh, improvement to this area has been really good. Thanks very much. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. Uh, and on Wednesday, we'll be doing a brick haul, no doubt for some more pieces to uh, enable us to start the Halloween specials uh, very soon. And then uh, on Friday, I think we just have to do part four of this airport because it's becoming just too cool of a build to not finish off. Yeah, I'm really liking it very much indeed. Do tell me what you think, as always, and uh, I'll see you next time. See you!